So far, we've been looking at probability experiments where there's been a few distinct outcomes rolling a dice. You either get a one, two, three, four, five, or six. Tossing two coins, you either get naught, one, or two heads. But there are some experiments where the number of outcomes is infinite and they're indistingu uh, almost indistinguishable from each other. For example, what's the probability that someone is exactly 1.7 metres tall to the million decimal places, 1.7000. There are so many different heights, if you measure accurately enough, that we can't really distinguish each one and give it a probability. So we now talk about continuous probability distributions as opposed to the previous discrete ones. And to analyse these, we need something called the probability density function, which we'll call little f, which depends on the value. And we can look at a graph of little f, there are all sorts of different uh, examples. Here's one possibility. Here's x, here's f of x. And we work out probabilities now by saying that the probability of getting, say, x between a and b is given by the area between those lines and under the graph. So this area is the probability that a is less than x is less than b. In other words, that x is in between a and b. And of course, a common way of working out areas in mathematics is to use integration. So this would be the integral from a to b of f of x dx. That's how we do probabilities, because we can't talk about the probability of a single value of x, because there are an infinite number of possible values. So we have to just look at, at uh, regions between a and b. Let's look at an example. If we take the density function f of x equals 12 times x squared minus x cubed, where x now is restricted to 0 to 1. This has a graph looking a bit like this. So we need to check that the area underneath the graph, the total area, is 1, because just like the total of all the probabilities added up to 1 before, we had to have sigma p equals 1. We now replace that by the idea that the integral of f of x dx has to equal 1 over whatever range uh, we're working in, in this case 0 to 1. So let's just check that that works in this case. If I integrate 12 x squared minus x cubed dx from 0 to 1. It's an easy integral because we've got simple powers. So we get 12. The integral of x squared is x cubed over 3. The integral of x cubed is x to the 4th over 4 from 0 to 1. So I put the top limit in and I get 12 lots of 1 over 3 minus 1 over 4, take away 12 lots where the bottom limit will sim simply be naught. A third minus a quarter is a twelfth, so 12 twelfth comes to 1. So that is a valid probability density function. It has the right area underneath, the total probability underneath is 1. And that of course is why I put the 12 there. If I put some other number it wouldn't have been a total integral of 1. So now we have a density function, and from this we can work out probabilities, say, of being between a quarter and a half by doing the integral from a quarter to a half of this function. We can then go on, as we'll see later, to use the density function to find the mean and the variance of these distributions.
Okay, Mary, so let's have a look at this one. So solve x plus 2x equals 12. So what do you think you do first? Okay, well, I want x on its own, so I would put x equals 12 minus 2x. Okay, so a lot of the time we want to get x by itself, but what we want to do first is get all of these x's together. So can you see anything we can do with this? Get all these together in one place. Oh, okay, it's 3x, isn't it? Yeah, so absolutely. So 3x equals 12. Oh, and so x equals 4. Brilliant, spot on, well done.